guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you so much for returning to my channel. Today we're talking about superfoods to supercharge your dog's bowl. So we already know, we, we just know that for us, <laughs> eating healthy, eating more healthy foods um, and exercising, moving our body are the two main things that we can do to be as healthy as we possibly can be. Guess what? The same is true for our dogs and our cats. So we are specifically talking about our dog's bowl today. Now, okay, if you've been following me for any period of time, you know I'm a big proponent of feeding fresh foods to our pets. That isn't to say that you can't do better even if you feed a dry food diet, a kibble diet. You absolutely can. So whatever stage you are at, whether you are feeding a 100% kibble diet right now, whether you're feeding some sort of hybrid diet, or even if you are a DIY raw feeder or commercial, like commercially available raw food feeder, wherever you are on the spectrum, adding in these superfoods can supercharge your dog's bowl. So let's get right into it. Okay, sardines. I love feeding sardines to my dog. I generally feed her sardines once a week, though some people will feed up to three to four times a week. And it depends on the size of your dog, of course, with everything we're talking about as to how much you would wanna feed. That's not the specifics of today's video. We're just talking about the foods themselves. So sardines are amazing for adding omega-3s, vitamin B12, vitamin D. We're talking about amino acids, um, CoQ10, right? all of these wonderful, wonderful benefits of feeding sardines to our dogs. It, they can help build muscle in the body, um, boost the immune system, and best of all, they are tiny, tiny little fish, so their mercury load is very, very low. That's important too. Feeding big fish, the bigger the fish, the more mercury is going to be in their system. So tiny little fish like sardines, even anchovies, which we're not talking about anchovies, but tiny little fish, those are going to be your best bet if you are looking to reduce chemical load. Okay, the next one on the list is gonna be fresh berries. We're talking blueberries, right? Cranberries, strawberries, all the berries are absolutely wonderful and each provide gosh, their, their own <laughs> supercharged benefits. I know in reading the Forever Dog book, I learned that, and I will link that book in the description, by the way, if you haven't heard of it or read it yet, I highly recommend it. It's from Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib. And so strawberries help fight zombie cells. You never heard of zombie cells? I hadn't either, but they're a thing. So go check that out. Berries in general are, they are going to help attack those free radicals. They provide wonderful antioxidants and they help attack the free radicals inside the bottom and fight inflammation. Mushrooms. Okay, so mushrooms are a little controversial and here's the ground rule. If it's safe for a human to eat, it is safe for your dog to eat. So if your dog is out there foraging on their own for mushrooms, hmm, we probably want to stay away from that unless you are really good at identifying mushrooms. I'm not, but any sort of mushroom that you can buy for human consumption, or even forage, if you're good at that kind of thing, I'm not, for human consumption is also safe for your dogs. Mushrooms are excellent because uh, mushrooms have been proven to contain antiviral and anti-inflammatory and anti-tumor properties. They are an excellent source of fiber, which helps all that, all the flora of the gut biome. They help lower cholesterol and regulate blood sugar. The list goes on, mushrooms are incredible. Bone broth is the next one, guys. Now, I've done a bone broth video on my channel before and make sure you are subscribed if you're not already following or subscribing the channel because I have planned to do the Longevity Junkie Bone Broth and I'm gonna put that into a video for y'all as well. What's interesting about the Longevity Junkie Bone Broth and the reason that I'm going to be doing that video, even though I've already done a bone broth video in the past, is that this bone broth is unlike any bone broth I have seen recipes on before. It has a shorter cook time, which we're gonna test out, and it also is more like a bisque than a broth. So very, very interesting, but provides the same like end goal because bone broths contain glucosamine and chondroitin. They support joint health 
and slow the progression of degenerative joint disease. Bone broth is also great for recovery periods. So if your dog has been sick or they were ill or maybe they had a surgery and they can't have or shouldn't have <laughs> whole foods in their system yet, bone broth is gonna be excellent. It provides an incredible array of nutrients while not overwhelming the body and having to process and break down whole food sources. Also, not sure if you've heard of leaky gut, it's a thing and I've talked about it a little bit in the past. We can talk about it some more in the future, but bone broth is also great for helping heal leaky gut as part of an overall plan, but as part of it, it is incredible. Okay, dark leafy greens are the next one. Now, the thing with plant matter in dogs is that you do want to parboil them or steam them to help their body break down the plant matter. So while veggies are a big, big topic of conversation in the raw feeding community for dogs, here's the thing, yes, Dogs are carnivores, and no, they don't necessarily require veggies. However, there are benefits to veggies. And this is just a little side note for y'all. <laughs> While your dogs still do not produce the uh, amylase in their saliva to break down the plant matter that you may be feeding them, the pancreas has adapted over time to help break down plant matter. So yes, dogs actually can a little bit, break down plant matter. We need to help them along by providing it to them in a form that is easier to digest. So definitely chopping chopping them up, like fine, fine, fine chopping, food processor type chopping, um, put it in, and also parboiling them or steaming them. That's gonna help start to break down the cell walls in the plant matter so that your dog can more easily digest them and garner the, all the incredible nutrients that plants offer to us and to them. Dark leafy greens are incredible because of all the nutrients they provide, plus the fiber benefit. They are rich in phytonutrients, which give them antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Eggs, okay, eggs are another great way to add, to supercharge, add superfoods to your dog's bowl. Now, I am planning on doing an entire post on my Patreon for, uh, for all of the Patreon family that breaks down the risk and benefits of eggs for both dogs and cats. So while this particular video, we're not gonna be breaking down risk and benefit for cats on anything, uh, I think this is such an important topic. So I'm not gonna go too in detail in this video. Know that eggs are an incredible, incredible protein source. You can add them any which way your dog likes them raw. You can hard boil them, soft boil them. You can poach them all of the one or scramble them even if you want if, if your dog likes them that way that's one of the incredible things about eggs is that no matter how you serve it i don't think we should be frying them for our dogs i think that is just going a bit too much but that's my personal opinion <laughs> But regardless of how you serve them, your dog is getting the same nutrition from them. And if you do, or if you're interested in learning more about the risk and benefit of eggs for dogs and cats, make sure you join the Patreon family. The link is in the description below. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. But back to eggs, yes, they are an incredible, incredible high protein source. They also have fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Ginger is another really great superfood to help supercharge your dog's bowl. It helps fight cancer and relieve arthritis. Plus, and we already know this about ginger, right? It helps soothe the digestive system and relieve nausea. Okay, turmeric, guys, turmeric. Okay, so with turmeric, curcumin is the active ingredient that we are looking for. So whether you feed turmeric, the spice as a whole, or you supplement the derivative of curcumin, which is incredible. <laughs> curcumin is responsible for the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, now I'm up to, I have to switch my fingers, <laughs> and antifungal properties of turmeric. Okay, pumpkin. So I feed pumpkin. I used to feed pumpkin more regularly. Kim is a pretty regular girl. So as my dogs age, I have found in the past that with age, I need to supplement a little bit more. And pumpkin is one of those really wonderful sources of fiber that I was supplementing more often to my older dogs. Kim is currently my only dog and she is a very, very healthy, 
young, rambunctious eight. So I have not been supplementing pumpkin to her very often. However, it is my go-to when she has tummy upset. So if it's mild, like we are not going to the vet, we just have a mild case of tummy upset, which does happen from time to time. My go-to is ground turkey and pumpkin. So pumpkin is wonderful because I already said it's a wonderful fiber source. It's also rich in beta carotene, which enhances immune health and strengthens the eyes. Okay, raw local honey, also great for dogs. Side note, I said this video is not about cats, but I do just wanna interject that currently, uh, we do not believe that cats can have honey. Like don't feed honey to your cats, please. There are topical uses for honey that are okay for both your dogs and cats, but to feed only our dogs. So when we feed raw local honey, we are providing, so in that raw local honey is a little bit of local bee pollen. That is what helps your dog build an immune response to allergens in the environment. Same for you. Honey is also soothing to the throat, so useful for a cough as well. And I mentioned earlier, it can also be, with it has antibacterial properties, so we can use it to treat topically wounds and cuts. Also, don't feed honey to puppies. Just like we wouldn't feed it to babies under a year old, we don't wanna feed it to puppies because their immune system is still growing. All right, here is the last one on today's list, at least. There are plenty of wonderful foods to feed our pets, but to round out today's list, I'm going to give you coconut oil. Coconut oil is wonderful. It is naturally antibacterial, antifungal. What's really great about coconut oil is that it has MCTs. These are medium chain triglycerides. So that fat that you're getting from the coconut oil that your dog is getting from the coconut oil is very, very easy to digest. And what's great about MCTs is that it doesn't translate to fat in the body. Instead, it translates to energy. It helps improve digestion. It helps digestive upset. It can help balance blood sugar. It can relieve inflammation. So we're talking about like arthritis or joint issues. It can help relieve that in your dog. It boosts immunity. It moisturizes the skin and coat, especially if used topically. And it helps brain development and can improve brain dysfunction. All right, guys. So that is today's list of superfoods to supercharge your dog's bowl. Let me know if you're using any of these already, if you're feeding these and the incredible, I'm telling you, you're going to see the benefits in your dog. You're going to see changes in your dog. Comment down below and let me know about that. If you're not feeding any of these, go ahead and comment and let me know which ones you plan on adding because boy are these some incredible incredible things to supercharge your dog's bowl thank you so much for being here with me today i appreciate each and every one of you if you haven't already please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed go ahead and click that subscribe button make sure you are following and getting all notifications also, I know I mentioned earlier, I really, really hope to see you over on Patreon. Join the family on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We're a little family over there and you get first look at new content. You get exclusive posts every week. You get behind the scenes. There's so much wonderful, wonderful stuff going on over on Patreon and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. You're helping to continue to bring great content to you and help reach other pets and their parents all around the world because that's the goal is to improve pets lives everywhere thank you so much for being here also check out the podcast if you're not already following the podcast wherever you get your podcast search the pet parenting reset and make sure to listen give us a follow and once you've listened to a few go ahead and rate us as well i would very much appreciate it thanks so much for being here have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love for me. And with that, I'll see you later, guys. Bye.